Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we're talking through kernel density estimation in question 20. Let's get started. A sample of losses has the following observations. 400, 600, 900, 1100, 1200. A rectangular kernel with bandwidth 300 is used to estimate the probability density function, PDF, of the losses at x equals 800. The resulting estimate is denoted f tilde sub r of 800. A triangular kernel with bandwidth 300 is used to estimate the PDF of the losses at x equals 800. The resulting estimates is denoted f tilde sub t of 800. The absolute difference in the estimates is denoted z, where z is the absolute value of f tilde sub r of 800 minus f tilde sub t of 800. Calculate z. Jumping in, uh, really this problem just comes down to understanding kernel density. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure there has been one of this type of question on every exam. Um, so definitely a question like this. Hopefully it's not always going to be triangular kernels because as you'll see they get a little bit more complicated than rectangular kernels which are really straightforward. Um, but just going to start off with trying to understand uh, what kernel density is and why you might use it. Uh, the second thing that you need to know is the term bandwidth. So this is one of those scenarios where you might understand um, what kernel density is and how to apply it, but if you don't know exactly what this term is, uh, then you might not be able to do the problem. So that is, bandwidth is uh, a radius, not in a diameter. So we'll get into that in a, a second here. So, but this is in the required knowledge, but we're going to be using the, as an example, uh, the triangular kernels and data values that we see in this question. Um, but just wanted to have an example to walk through what kernel density estimation is. Um, so first off, we have five data points, and these are the five data points listed. And what we might do is create an empirical PDF. So we'll just say, hey, there are five data points, so there is a 50% chance uh, that the future loss will be 400, a 20% chance that it's 600, a 20% chance that it's 900, 20% chance it's 1100, and 20% chance that it's 1200. Um, but obviously this is really clunky. Um, also we know that you know losses are continuous even though it's everything worked out to be a really nice number for this problem. So it's totally possible that you know we have an $800 loss so just using the raw data values doesn't give you a good estimate. A common solution to this is you just assume a distribution. So for example, in this problem, um, if we had this data set and we wanted to create an empirical PDF, we might say, okay, well let's just assume the data follows a normal distribution. Calculate the mean and variance, and that's how we're going to estimate our PDF. So that's what I have here. If we use those two metrics, estimate the PDF curve, uh, this is what we would get. The downside to this is you need to make an assumed um, distribution choice. So you had to pick a normal distribution. Uh, so you might uh, want something a bit more automated so that you can apply to any distribution and you don't want to have to think about, oh, does it follow normality or not? Um, and you might just want to give more flexibility to this estimation. And that's where kernel density can come in. So, for example, in this problem, one of the densities that we consider is triangular. So what that means is if we look at uh, 400, um, what we did initially, right, we said there's a 20% chance you're exactly at 400. Well, we might say instead, okay, there's a 20% chance of you falling in this area. So because I saw 400, I think you're likely to be a 400, but that could have almost just as easily have been 350 or 450, right? Or, you know, maybe the measurement was off and it could have been a 200. I think that's less likely than 350, but still possible. And so you're just spreading out your estimated density um, across some assumed shape. And so in this case, we're shaping this 20% mass at exactly 400 and instead converting it into still 20%, but across this triangle with a bandwidth of 300. So when I said bandwidth is a radius, what I'm saying is 
400 minus 300 is 100, or plus 300 is 700. So bandwidth is just telling you the base of your triangle, um, or bandwidth times 2 is the base of your triangle. Uh, I actually, in that explanation, said that we're taking 20% area and then spreading it out, but actually what I have graphed here is I made all the triangles a total area sum to 1. So what we then need to do is divide everything by 5, so that way when you sum the area of all the triangles, the summation is 1. Um, because, again, to have a PDF, it needs a total area under the curve summing to 1, because they are uh, meant to be probabilities. Uh, so that's what I have here. I just take all the y values and divided them by 5, because in this case, if I made all the triangles have area 1, and then I divide by the number of samples that will get me to my desired summation. And then finally, uh, I have this regraph where I just sum those areas up. So in, in this graphic here, the darker colors are showing you where there's overlap. Um, but if instead you had all these triangles and you summed all their y values at all those points, uh, we would end up with this estimated curve. Um, so in this problem, we're going to end up essentially calculating the height of this graph at 800, um, just as a little bit of a teaser. So uh, that's just a walkthrough of what kernel density estimation is and kind of uh, visually how you'd walk through it. But now to jump into the actual problem itself, uh, I apologize in advance. This is a lot more wordy um, than the typical kind of walkthrough, but uh, for this type of problem, there's a lot of mental shortcuts you can take, I feel like, if, if you just kind of think through it. So, um, the first thing is uh, we're lucky that in this problem we're dealing with the PDF, not the CDF. And so we can really just fully ignore some data points. So again, the bandwidth, um, if something is not within a range, it's not going to affect the PDF. So scrolling back up, this very first triangle, uh, centered at 400, well, if we add 300, it only gets to 700, right? So I know that this very first data point has no influence on the PDF at 800 because it's too far away. Um, so using that, uh, the bandwidth is 300, and looking at all our data points, the only three points, three of the five, that actually are going to impact the value at 800, which is our point of interest, are 600, 900, and 1100. And that's because they're all within 300 distance of that 800. Next, uh, rectangle, rectangular kernels are the easiest to work with. So again, we have five points. And so if we want their total area to uh, sum to one, we first want to say, OK, well, the width of my rectangle is 600. So if I make the height of my rectangle 1 over 600, the area of one rectangle is 1. So I'm going to make the height of my rectangle 1 over 600, and then I'm also going to divide by the number of data points, which is 5. And that's going to get me to the correct height of all my rectangles, such that their total area is going to sum to 1. Uh, so now, since it's rectangle, it's, it's going to be um, uniform. And so all you need to know is which rectangles have an impact on the x value 800. And again, we have three here. Um, so 600 and 900, uh, both are going to contribute. And 1100 is a special case. We'll see in uh, the triangle case, we actually end up eliminating it. But since it's a rectangle, uh, even though it's exactly 300 distance away, uh, this point is actually going to influence the PDF at 800 as well. So they, you know, a given rectangle has a height of 1 over 600 times 1 fifth, and we have three of them influencing the point at 800. And so we just multiply this all out, and we get 1 in 1,000. So our PDF for the rectangular kernel at x equals 800 is 1 1,000th. Next, we just repeat the exact same process on the triangle. Um, so for this, uh, first, again, I like to solve s such that one of the given kernels will sum to 1. So we have a base of 600, and we know the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, and then we want it to equal, um, I actually skipped a step here, we want it to equal 0.2, normally I'd start with 1, 
and then at the very end divide by 5. But here we can just say, since there are 5 data points, we'll skip and say uh, we know this area needs to equal 20%. We know the base is 600 because the bandwidth is 300. So again, bandwidth is the radius, so you just kind of multiply that by 2. And then solve for our height of the triangle, which is 1 over 1500. Uh, next, I, uh, for this problem, actually, the this graph, obviously, I didn't know the actual exact y values and write everything out perfectly, but this is a graphic that by hand I actually drew, and I feel like it really helps. Uh, as you work through these kernel density problems because you can see which triangles don't impact anything. Um, but when you ha have this plot, uh, sorry, let me get that in. So with this plot, we have our points of interest, right? So we have, what did I say? Uh, 600, 900, and 1100, so those middle three points. Um, and what we see is at 800, uh, so this one that's centered at 600, it's two-thirds over on this triangle before it gets to 800, uh, which means that this height at 800 is just one-third whatever the total height of the triangle is, uh, since it's just perfectly linear. So we know at 800, the height of the triangle centered at 600 is just one-third the height of the triangle. Before we solve for that exact quantity, we can actually just look over at our triangle at 900, and we actually see the opposite relationship. So 800 is just 100 over the total width, of, or bandwidth of 300. So we actually know that at 800, this triangle, uh, the height is two-thirds of the total triangle height. And so when we add those up, one-third and two-thirds, we just get the height of the triangle. Finally, we have the point at 1100, and its uh, contribution at 800 is exactly zero, uh, because it's at this very bottom corner of its corresponding triangle. So all that works out to be one-third triangle, two-thirds triangle, and then zero is just the height of the triangle, which we actually already calculated, and that is 1 over 1500. So that's going to be our PDF height of our triangular kernels. Then, just pulling everything together, again, we're interested in calculating z, which is the absolute value difference between our two estimations at 800. So here we're just doing 1 over 1,000, subtract 1 over 1,500, and that equals 0 0.00033. So we can scroll back up and see that falls in the range of answer d. Just want to say thank you again for watching. Uh, at this point, we're almost halfway through our walkthrough of spring 2019. My current plan is to walk through the other past MAS1 exams, but please comment below if there is a different style of video you'd like, or you'd prefer me to just walk through concepts that are covered in MAS1. Really want to provide whatever others find the most helpful. Uh, so again, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, and feel free to comment below if you have any ideas. Thanks.